Hey guys, it's Lizzie here. So today I'm going to show you how I did my sort of recreation of the Bride of Frankenstein makeup look. So this is basically um, from the inspiration I've got from those sorts of images. I wanted to create a look that was very glamorous and um, something that is very achievable. You don't need any special effects, you don't need a wig or anything like that. It's basically a lovely dark green smoky eye, really bold lip, you could have any colour, black, red, nude, and then some of the stitching drawn on. So you can go as over the top as you like, you can make all the different sections of skin different skin tones to make it look more patchwork, or you can go for the really basic look like I have. So um, if you want to know how to recreate this look, then just keep watching. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to do is prime my skin, and for that I'm going to use Bare Minerals Prime Time and Fair. Now for my foundation I want a really pale full coverage base, so I'm going to be using Kat Von D's Look It Tattoo foundation in shade 42, which is her palest shade, and then also the lightning drops from um, the body shop. Now as always I'm going to dot that around my skin and then buff it in. Um, I'm not going to set that yet because I am going to be leaning on my face to do winged eyeliner and then I'm potentially using products that have a fair amount of fallout, so I want to know that I can buff that away afterwards. So I'm going to move on to the eyes, and for that I'm going to use all these lovely green shades from the Garden of Eden palette by Sleek. My one of them sort of quite damaged and broken, but this palette's still available, it's not limited edition, and it's basically got every shade that we're going to need and a matte brown for helping to blend out the crease. I'm going to prime my eyes with a little bit of Urban Decay's Primer Potion. So for setting that in place I'm going to use my white powder from Stargazer. Now I'm mainly going to focus on setting just underneath the brow to the crease keeping the majority of the eyelid quite tacky so that the green colours really stick on. If your skin's a lot darker and you've gone for a paler foundation, that white powder still might be a bit too pale, like you might suddenly have really white eyes in comparison to your skin, whereas um, for me it's not that much lighter. So what I'd suggest then is using a translucent powder or a slightly darker shade. Firstly I'm going to take a tiny bit of that dark matte brown from the palette and run that through the crease. If you have darker skin you can use a heavy hand or use the darker colour if you need to be. So green won't naturally blend into a skin tone whereas brown is a lot warmer and would blend into all skin tones a lot better which is why we're using it as our transition shade. So I'm ignoring under the eyes at the moment because I think there might be a bit of fallout so um, there's no concealer or anything under there just a thin layer of foundation. I'm going to take that same colour and now sort of bring it down to the lash line. So we're really filling in this outer V shape. I've really done this eye makeup on a different day just to sort of practice and I used greens from about four different palettes um, and then I found the Garden of Eden palette today and realised actually all the shades are in there so it's a lot more achievable now, you know that palette's only about £8. So if you wanted to create this look you can and then it also comes with nice golds and browns for sort of everyday looks as well. Okay, there we go. I have pink glitter everywhere on my face, it just won't come off. I will um, tell you why later in a different video but I'll link that at the side and in the down bar for you. It's all very exciting, good news. Now I'm going to take a flat eyeshadow brush and the pale green and just put that on the inner corner. And we're taking this about a third along. What we want to do is start with the lightest green and work to the darker one on the outer corner. And because this is quite light, I just then use the same brush and just blend out the edges. Now over the top of that, I'm going to take the shimmery palest green next to it and pat that over the top. Now because we have that light green base, um, it means that this will be even more opaque. Obviously you don't have to use both shades of green, but um, whilst they're there and they're in the same palette, you might as well. And actually, that light green and the darkest green are the only two mattes, so the middle shade would have had to have been a shimmer, and I think then it would look a bit weird, so we might as well just do the whole thing shimmery. So, so far we've used these two shades. Now I'm going to take this one, for right in the middle of the eye, and then deepen it with this dark green. So actually I'm going to take this colour all the way across to where we did the brown. This is the darkest shimmery one. Because we've already done our base, um, what you want to do is make sure you're always tapping off the brush before you apply it to your face. And another thing is, if it's a flat eyeshadow brush, just apply the product to one side. 
then the stuff on the side that's not touching the skin, so on the outside of the brush, won't fall down. Now what you want to do is blend those two greens together a bit better. So just press in between the two colours, lightly brushing the two shades together. So now it's just a bit more smooth. Next I'm going to take that dark matte green on a really small pencil brush and just put that on the outer corner. Now I'm going to be placing the colour slightly at a point so it's not completely curved like the brown was. I'm mainly doing this with my eye open at first so that um, because I have quite hooded eyes I know I'm going to be able to see this colour rose. If I did it with my eyes closed and then opened them quite a lot of the green will have gone. Then with the same brush, no more product, I'm just going to start buffing out the outer lines. Now I'm going to leave that for now because I'm going to buff that out with some more of the brown at the end but I'm going to match up the other eye first. And you sort of just want to keep going between all your brushes until you get a nice smooth gradation. Now that we've got to that stage we want to um, conceal our under eyes and then do that as well. So for concealer I'm going to use NYX HD concealer. Now I'm going to set that concealer in place with my white powder. Um, so I want to make sure there's no creases. and then brush a thin layer of that underneath the eye. Okay, so as I had already started doing, um, you want to take that dark green shade and join it down to underneath the eye. So it should look something like that. So as you can see where I've blended it here, and then stopped. <laughs> we will blend out the bottom soon. And then you want to take your brown shade and blend that out. So now you can see that just with a little bit of brown eyeshadow you can stop it looking so harsh and really diffuse all the colours. I'm then going to take the light shimmery green and just put that on the last third under the eye. Same colour as we used on the top. Also in the inner corner I'm going to add a little bit of mermaid from NYX. Now we're going to do winged eyeliner and it needs to be quite dramatic and thick. Um, so for that I'm going to use Kiko's Lasting Gel Eyeliner and I'm going to do it off camera, so um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've finished the eyeliner, um, sorry about the scratching, my cat's still playing around with that box. So um, I've done quite a thick wing and um, what I'm going to do now is, oh I've also set my foundation since doing that. Um, I'm now going to do some contour, so I'll zoom you out a little bit. Now I want quite a dramatic contour, so I'm going to suck my cheeks in. Catch the line from sort of the centre of my ear about halfway along my cheek, turn the brush the other way and start to blend it out. You want a nice smooth gradation upwards and the harsher line along the bottom. Now I am going to blend it out further, but I'm going to leave it there for now and stick with this brush and then blend it out with a different one. Okay, so when you're looking quite ridiculous, um, I'm going to take a powder brush, oh this hair's everywhere, and just start to blend that out with a little bit of translucent powder. So I'm just going to buff over the top and blend in all the way around the edge. Now I'm going to put a black coal pencil in my waterline. For that I'm using Urban Decay's Perversion. Now for my highlight to stick with the green sort of theme, um, I'm going to attempt to use Mermaid I think. Um, we'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. Let's see if we regret this. Okay, that's all good. That's fine, I don't know why I was worried. And it's nice because in here is that same shade and they sort of balance each other out. Okay, so now that all the powder work's done and before you apply your mascara, brows and lipstick, um, I'm going to spritz my face with NYX Dewy Finishing Setting Spray. This will just um, absorb any excess powder and just make the skin not look quite as matte. Next I'm going to apply my mascara off camera and for that I'm going to use High and Mighty by H&M and then I'm also going to apply a set of false lashes and for that I'm just going to take these sort of nice fluffy ones, they look a bit like the Demi Wispies from Ardell but they're significantly cheaper off eBay. So there's my mascara and false lashes done, I've done one brow as well so I'll just show you how I did that. First I took the NYX um, Micro Pencil and this is in Ash Brown. I'm just going to underline the start of my brow, so it's quite thin. We're going for a really full brow because it adds to the character. I've just put my dressing gown on because it's really nippy. 
Um, so I've now finished all my face makeup. Um, last thing to do is to decide the lip colour. Sorry, my cat's still. Hmm. So. Oh, I don't know if to go for red, which is quite common with Bride of Frankenstein look when I was doing research, but red and green together reminds me of Christmas. And so I don't, I'm not so keen on that. But I mean, feel free to use red. Or I could use green. I quite like green and green. Sorry, I'm looking in the viewfinder to see what I look like. Um, and I've not used this in a tutorial. And it's a lovely colour, it's Jupiter by Pretty Zombie Cosmetics. So that could work. Or purple, and I love purple and green. It reminds me of the Joker. I've always loved purple and green. I think they go really well. So there's bright purple, which I think looks amazing. Or there's dark purple, which I also think looks amazing. I feel like it shouldn't be green today. Green will have its appearance soon. I feel like it should be, I should try the dark purple and then maybe add this in the center and make like a purple ombre lip. So I'm going to do that off camera um, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I sort of changed my mind. I put Transylvania on, which is the darkest purple, and then I got um, Frostbite, which is prismatic, I can't say the word, eyeshadow from NYX, and I put it on one of those um, like eyeshadow applicators that comes with every eyeshadow palette. Basically just patted it on, and I've been patting it onto my lips. It's the same sort of effect as what I've got on the highlighter. And then... then and then I'm just sort of patting it right in the centre. And the triangular bit at the top, the point, is good for the cupid's, the cupid's bow. So basically, this is the base of the makeup complete. So you could stop here and just have um, crazy purple and green makeup look. And, um, you know, this would be perfect for any occasion, I'd say. Um, it might be a bit over the top for some people. But what I'm going to do now is add on all the stitching to make it look like my face is made up of lots of different parts. So um, we're now going to transform it into the more Halloween side. To achieve that, I'm going to use a mixture of products. Um, firstly, I've got two liquid eyeliners from Kat Von D. I've got the Tattoo Eyeliner in Trooper, which is a nice thin um, applicator. And it gets a really nice, precise, swift line because it's a brush, not felt tip. So it's, um, you know, you can create nice flicks with it. And then I've also got a thicker one. Um, it's the one in Poetica, which I'll show you the difference. Poetica's the thickest one from Kat Von D. So Poetica's on the top. I think God, it's really battered. These three red eyeshadows from the body shop. Now they definitely don't do these anymore. This is literally the first eyeshadow palette I ever received and it's from my cousin and I love it. She did my makeup with it that day um, and then said I could keep it and it was, a, yeah, the, I think the first makeup product I ever had. Now I always use it for special effects because there's the three different shades of red and they um, are not shimmery at all, they're completely matte. And I think they're great. So yeah, it's really grubby, and it's really old, and it's really gross, but I spray it with anti-vac spray all the time. It doesn't smell bad, it's not a weird consistency, so it's absolutely fine. I've then got, um, and then two makeup brushes at the moment, but I might try a few others, we'll see. I'm going to take the dark eyeshadow and the thin angled brush and start drawing on the stitches. So I'm gonna start the stitches just along my contour for now. One second, I need to take pictures of this. Okay, now back to business. Okay, so I've drawn some lines. Um, I've done it right back into my hair and then all the way around to where I can't see anymore. So I'm sure it'll be fine once my hair's down. I'm then going to take the smaller fluffy brush and the lightest shade and just go either side of the dark lines. I'll show you what I mean. So like that, and then you just want to blend that out. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to do all the rest off camera and then I'll come back for the next stage. So once you've done all the red um, sort of shading around the stitches, we then want to actually draw the stitches in place. So for that I'm going to use Kat Von D's Tattoo Eyeliner in Trooper. Now the aim is to do a nice swift line. Um, you don't want it to be too jaggedy because it's trying to look like a stitch. So you sort of want to just go for it. They're not all going to look the same. That's absolutely fine. You are trying to be a monster after all.
So next I'm going to draw the shading um, of the little dots of where the thread would have come out. So I'm going to use the dark red and a really thin brush. So what you want to do is just place the brush on the skin and I'm going to just twizzle it around. And there you get a dot. And again, you want to do that all the way around both sides of the black stitching. The next thing I'm going to do is go over those dots with a black eyeliner. And for that I'm using the thicker one, the Poetica one. Okay, so it should look something like that. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. It's quite time consuming and repetitive, but um, it's very effective. So there we go guys, I've finished the stitches on both sides of my face. So you can take them wherever you like, you know, you can go across here, across the centre of your face, whatever takes your fancy. But I thought I'd keep it quite symmetrical as I'm a little bit OCD. So um, I hope you found the tutorial helpful. And what you can do with this particular look is pair it with a wig. Um, so you could have the sort of stereotypical black wig with the white lines going up it or um, if you have quite dark hair you can buy clip in sections of hair from Claire's accessories and things like that so you could get some of them in a light blonde or a white and clip them at the front and sort of blend them into your hair um, I do have quite white hair at the front but I'm terrible at hair and I didn't know how to style it and I've already bought quite a few wigs for other makeup tutorials and things too so I thought this look would go quite well just with my natural hair and then also um, you know this sort of thing you can go as elaborate as you like. You can make these other sections, different coloured skin tones, you can add as much detail as you want really. So um, I basically wanted to show you a makeup tutorial that's sort of mildly Halloween-y but then also quite glamorous too with the false lashes and the nice overdrawn lips, things like that. So thank you so much for watching and sharing your support. If you want to check out any of my other Halloween tutorials, I did one recently on Morticia Adams, then um, I'll leave them all below. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye bye.